back once again to anti-religious scripture study with me karen b and just jack flat earth shabbat shalom shabbat shalom 
Hope you're all, all having right. a wonderful so, day. So, <laughs> yeah, we, we got a long chapter again, but um, there's not a lot of stuff to get into detail with because it is quite um, mechanical, I guess you could say, in a way. It's just very descriptive of how the tabernacle is being built. Um, there is a gentleman who is doing some good work on the subject, so I want to shout him out again. Go to project314.org and learn about how he took all the ingredients of the tabernacle, and rather than just going with the tradition that's been going on for centuries, he actually took all the ingredients and found out Jack. that the best way to make the model the tabernacle is a large dome shape. Oof. Oh. Am I glitching or yeah, muted? You're, you're glitching. Glitching a little bit. That's not good. Now. All right, you seem okay now. Your your video is a little is pixelated. Am I still glitching? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Poor connection. I'm hardwired in too. I don't know why it's like this. Hmm. My bad. So am I. I blame Skype. Uh, so project314.org uh, the gentleman takes all the ingredients of the scriptures and does a model and the best way to use all the ingredients forms a dome shape with a open top that they would have a cover over so check that out very interesting very important you know, I'll just think that I'm not still choppy. Am I still choppy? Yeah, a little bit. <clears throat> I mean, mostly okay, but it's... Oh, boy. Oh, like right now, yeah, you're choppy. I'm going to hang up and call you right back. Okay. I'll All Skype. All righty. All right. All right. <clears throat> Wait for Jack to call back. If this doesn't work, I'm going to suggest we do a Zoom call. Hello? Can you look better. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, there, that's weird because I, I saw no delay or choppiness on your end at all. That was weird. Okay, so I'll just read the disclaimer. Um... I assume we're still alive, right? <laughs> yes, we are still alive. <laughs> okay. All right. Just Jack's disclaimer. To the religious, if you believe it's wrong to study scripture outside of your religion or denomination, if you believe your religious leaders or church fathers are incapable of having inherited anti-scriptural traditions of men, if you've made up your mind about if you've already made up your mind about scripture, including the scripture shouldn't be studied at all, then the stream is not for you. To others, if you are open-minded to others' opinions, if you haven't made up your mind about scripture. If you've been turned off to religion but believe there's truth in scripture that may have been changed or hidden by religion, if you live according to the scripture and like to dig in and discover more, then this stream is for you. We are looking at scripture in the original language using concordances or dictionaries for root words, as well as context from a non-religion perspective. We will as well have life experience discussion. We are not here to argue with others about theology or doctrine by the traditions of men, including Catholicism, Christianity, or Judaism. We will be discussing the importance of origins and show how religions contradict the scriptures. Okay, so there, there we go. So, so speaking of religions, um, this is a prime example of that, where they took the ingredients and they had already proposed an idea of this rectangular shape uh, that leaves overlaps of curtains and extra spare parts laying around. Um, and this gentleman was like, well, I'm not just going to go with the tradition. I'm going to actually read it and see if I could like, you know, model it for myself and see what actually comes up. And the per perfection of Pi being used, um, you know, helped him with a model that, you know, appears more dome shaped and it still fits within the parameters of the description in the Torah, including all the ingredients, the fasteners, the poles, the curtains, like stuff like that. So um, if you want to do a review on last chapter and share screen with me when you get a chance. Oh, okay. <clears throat> All righty. So the last chapter, 25. All righty. All right. So the first thing is 
the con- contributions for the sanctuary. That's a good title head. Um, everything that was used to make the tabernacle was given, not required. It was given. So that's one thing that's good. The Ark of the Covenant, um, it's the box of the contract is the, you know, the proper way of, of um, calling that out. But if you look at verse 16, it doesn't say the covenant, does it? Mm-hmm. It says, the, in the Ark you shall put the witness, which I will give you. Okay. So number one, there's a couple of things here that you can, you know, look at. Number one, I will give you, okay, mm-hmm. or, or the witness that I give you. So there is no call out of the witness given to him yet, and the the duplicate tablets is not mentioned until chapter 31, at the very end of chapter 31. So there is no quote unquote Ten Commandments or even the tablets at all. There's nothing. Uh, given to Moshe at this point. He's on the mountain getting descriptions on how to build the location where all these things are going to go. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it says that it will be like the the point, the location in our 3D realm that the creator will appear at designated times. Um, and it's um, the same thing with you look at the traditions of how the Ark of the Covenant is depicted with a couple of angels on the top of the lid. Uh, it doesn't make as much sense as you, what's described here is they're looking down at the lid, and it's more like a throne shape rather than a box with angels on top. So, hold on one second. For those of you who missed that, uh, please go back uh, a couple of weeks and check out the one that I think that the depiction is most accurate with. Um, and it's claimed to be an eyewitness account of what it actually looks like in recent history. So um, it has to be overcovered with pure gold. Uh, we talked about gold being a, a highly, um, what's the word? Oh, my gosh. Conductive. Conductive material. <laughs> <clears throat> Brain there. A highly conductive material, uh, and I think that things that are spiritual and electric and magnetic and frequency and all that stuff is all the same thing. So, to me, like, it makes perfect sense that it would have to be a highly conductive material for the spirit to uh, manifest. And you can scroll down a little bit further now. That was two weeks ago, and then we, after ch- uh, verse 20, we did, okay, so the table for the bread, yeah. And for some reason, they translate it as showbread when there's nothing specifically called showbread. It's not even like a thing. It's just bread. Um, And this also has specific dimensions and covered in pure gold. And, you know, then there's the the lampstand, which we know as what? What's the lampstand called? Um, Do you remember? Menorah. Menorah. Very good. So (laughs) that is the um that is the seven spirits mentioned in revelation for those who who are also um considering the new testament that this everything that was made in the tabernacle was supposed to be a shadow picture of what is in the actual throne room in the you know i think in the far north um you know spiritual realm um that these this menorah is a very specific thing on how it's laid out. And I think that also has to do with the whole resonance thing. Like an an antenna has to be shaped a certain way to pick up certain frequencies. So if you look at like the way that the, um, um, what's it called? The tab tabernacle. I mean the, the temple. Oh my gosh. The temple Institute, the temple Institute is trying to reconstruct uh, a new Mm. temple structure and they've already made a mock uh, menorah, but it doesn't seem to match the description in the scriptures. So I think, you know, it's going to pick up a different frequency, like the wrong frequency. Right. (laughs) You understand what I'm saying? Like all this stuff is very sketchy to me when they're like, Oh, we need to re we need to restore the temple, but we're going to do it our way and not according to the scripture. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very problematic. Um, 
So we looked at that and how it appears to have each branch is broken up into four parts rather than a branch and then a bunch of stuff at the top. It's a, it's a different form. Um, and it doesn't describe in the Torah, just to say, just to like give the disclaimer, I'm speculating here. I'm speculating a lot because it doesn't say anything about antenna. It doesn't say anything about frequency. It doesn't say anything about conductive material. Right. But it does all these things. If you think about why were they made of these items, mm -hmm. the only thing in our, our current, you know, understanding of technology and, and physics it makes perfect sense that this is like a, a technological, you know, connecting antenna and um, hub. So there we go. And by the way, um, there are some people who have made the postulation that fire is electric as well. So <clears throat> that fire is electric. Yes. Um, yeah, it has similar I, properties to I it. I don't know that it's not, I, it, you know, yeah. it, all of it could be some sort of electrochemical process. Right. So we can go to the new chapter whenever you're ready. All righty. And, and just FYI, if you're in a chat um, and you want to ask questions, it makes it easier to pop out if you actually type the word question in there yeah. so we can find it. Um, also, all right. Uh, you can start, you start fires with electricity, do we not? <laughs> like all the yes. time? <laughs> yes. All the time. And it, it produces heat and light and there's a lot to it. There's a lot to it. Yeah. I mean, when you strike flint stone, that's like a piezoelectric sort of thing, isn't it? And if you change the frequency of electricity, it changes colors. And if you change the chemical compound of a fire, it changes colors. Yeah. There's a lot of things to it. There's, yeah. Sure. It's a lot. I went down this rabbit hole years ago mm -hmm. before flat earth even. <laughs> so <clears throat> excuse me. All right. I'm going to mute one second and clear my throat really good. One okay. second. Okay. All right. So I hope that was muted. You were. All right. <laughs> okay. Chapter 26. And make the dwelling place with 10 curtains of fine woven linen and blue and purple and scarlet material Make them with Keruvim, the work of a skilled workman. Now, re remember, in King James Version, it doesn't say Keruvim, it says Cherubim, mm -hmm. which people will get confused with the Greek, um, you know, flying naked babies, right? Mm -hmm. Flying naked babies are not what a Cherubim is at all. It's something of abundance. That's just what a Cherubim actually means. Hmm. So, I'm getting tall, tall dudes, uh, for lack of a better term. And also, it is called the dwelling place, right? Um, if you look over there in the translation, top right hand side, mm -hmm. the dwelling, right? Mm -hmm. But if you go to the scriptures, I mean the uh, King James version, they call it the tabernacle. So, tabernacle. <laughs> is literally the dwelling place. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is the, this is where the creator chose to dwell in the 3D realm. All right. All right. And if you want to go through the colors, we can. Uh, Tekela is blue. Purple is... Can you go back really quick? I'm just going to go through it really quick. Purple is a, a, a weaving color. And I think that's because it's, you know, red and blue. Uh, the next one is scarlet, which is actually like a pinkish red. And then there's the red of the, um, uh, a darker red. So where it says scarlet material, material is italicized. Mm -hmm. It's because it's the, it's the, it basically says pink red. Okay. So it's actually two colors, but it's like one color describing the other color. So it's a lighter red, just FYI. Okay. And I think, I think that's easily explained as like, you know, if you think about clay, clay is not a very bright red. It's a darker red, uh, paler red, you know. Mm -hmm. All right. 
The length of each curtain is 28 cubits and the width of each curtain 4 cubits. All the curtains having one measure. All right, so the <clears throat> um, the curtains are also called rugs, right? So it's like something that is uh, made typically for the ground, but they're using it for hanging up. So this is something that you would actually typically, you know, in the bottom of a of a a tent, it would be that, but instead they're hanging, so they're curtains. Okay. Five curtains are joined together, and five curtains are joined to each other. Okay, so joined is uh, a coupled spouse. <laughs> So it's like they're, you marry them, right? You're actually, it's it's uh, coupling them, joining them. It's not just joining them, but it, like you're marrying them, okay. you know. They're permanently joined, yeah. And you shall make loops of blue on the edge of the end curtain on one set and do the same on the edge of the end curtain on the second set. Yep, and that, that blue is techelet, which is also... Uh, the color that you're told to use in the tzitzit, which are the the cords that you wear to signify that you belong to the creator. Okay. And it's also representative of the sapphire floor of when the elders and Moshe went up to the mountain, the sapphire floor of the throne room, that blue. Mm -hmm. Make 50 loops in the in the one curtain and make 50 loops on the edge of the second curtain of the second set, the loops being opposite to each other. Loops is uh, better uh, translated as spiral. It's even talking about how a scroll gets rolled up. Mm -hmm. So it's that kind of a loop. So it <laughs> may not just be like a ring. It might actually be like a, you know, a spiral, like a coil almost. Or like the keychain rings like uh -huh. that, something like that. Uh, okay. And you shall make 50 hooks of gold and shall join the curtains together with the hooks and the dwelling place shall be one. Yep. And you shall make curtains of goat's hair for a tent over the dwelling place. Make 11 curtains. The length of each curtain is 30 cubits and the width of each curtain 4 cubits. One measure to the 11 curtains. And you shall join the five curtains by themselves and the six curtains by themselves. And you shall double over the six curtains at the front of the tent. And again, this is couple or companion for join. <clears throat> and you shall make 50 loops on the edge of the curtain that is outermost in one set and 50 loops on the edge of the curtain of the second set. And you shall make 50 bronze hooks and put the hooks into the loops and join the tent together and it shall be one. Echad, one. Join as one. And the overlapping part of the rest of the curtains of the tent, the half curtain that remains, shall hang over the back of the dwelling place. That is, the, the overlapping part is the excess. Or the, the um, what do they call it? Trying to remember what King James calls it, the um, remnant, remnant, mm. the leftover bit. And a cubit on one side and a cubit on the other side of what remains of the length of the curtains of the tent is to hang over the sides of the dwelling place on this side and on that side to cover it. In other words, these, the walls of the tent are not just sitting side by side. They're overlapping each other. So there's no exterior light getting in even, right? So this is like a really enclosed building, you know, tent building. So it's not just like, you know, curtains um, hanging. If you look at like the current model of the tabernacle, they basically, it looks like, um, like a, a wall made of curtains. So curtain pole, curtain pole, curtain pole. But there's no overlapping shown on it when here it's clearly describing overlapping. 
okay. the excess overlapping. Right. So that also shows you that the walls do overlap each other like the design of that the dome thing. So. And you shall make a covering of ram skins dyed red for the tent and covering of fine leather above that. So ram skin, um, yeah, skin of the of the strong animal. So elam. And for the dwelling place, you shall make the boards of acacia wood standing up. Ten cubits is the length of a board and a cubit and a half the width of each board. Very specific. Yeah. Two tenons in each board for binding one to another. Do the same for all the boards of the dwelling place. So you basically thread cords through it to hold the boards together. If you think about like a modern tent that where the poles like have a string in the middle that like a bungee cord type string when you pull the poles apart and then you put them back together, Mm -hmm. you know, so it's kind of like that method, like the tendons, you know, are the cords that hold it together and they're equidistant, uh, equidistant joints, uh, for the, um, the board, the one equi. Okay. So to where it says to another, it actually says equidistant joints and where in English it says to another. So two tendons in each board for binding one equidistant to the next. Okay. And you shall make the boards for the dwelling place, 20 boards for the south side, and make 40 sockets of silver under the 20 boards, two sockets under each of the boards for its two tenons. Right, and you could actually say the right-hand side other than the south side, and it still would be the same translation. Because south is the right hand of looking towards sunrise. Mm -hmm. And for the second side of the dwelling place, on the north side, 20 boards. So that's why you know the other one is south, because it refers to the north. (laughs) (laughs) Context is everything. Yeah. And there are 40 sockets of silver, two sockets under each of the boards. And these sockets are actually the foundations. In other words, the, the, the base that holds them in place. So they are sockets, I guess you could call them that, but it's basically the, the object that's holding them to, into place, the boards into place. Mm. And for the extreme parts of the dwelling place, westward, make six boards. The extreme parts. Yeah. What, that, what does that mean? The extreme parts. Because <laughs> it's parts the word the for, place. for the loin. The, the loin. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see what King James Version calls it. I want to see this. This is, yeah, extreme parts. And for the sides for the of the sides. Tab- tabernacle, okay. westward. So, so one said sides and one said extreme parts. Okay. So one saying extremities and the other one is saying sides. The extremities would be the closer one, but it's the loins of the dwelling place. The tender loin. Yep. Okay. And make two boards for the two back corners of the dwelling place. And they are double beneath the sim- and they are double beneath and similarly they are complete to the top. To the one ring, so it is for both of them. They are for the two corners. Okay, so I have where it says beneath. I'm I'm up to there, the double beneath, okay? Mm -hmm. But I have unite existing perfection. I don't know about complete to the top. I don't don't really know how they got there. Um, Oh, no, the top is the next line. So I don't know the complete unite existing perfection complete okay so they just they just ignored the unite um exist them to unite that's what they're missing as one okay and they shall be eight boards and their sockets of silver 16 sockets 
two sockets under the one board and two sockets under the other board. Very technical. <laughs> Very technical. And you shall make bars of acacia wood, five for the boards on one side of the dwelling place. And five bars for the boards on the other side of the dwelling place. And five bars for the boards of the side of the dwelling place for the extreme parts westward. Now that one says, that one does say why, uh, side instead of loin. So that's why I'm like, why would they translate loin as, oh, they, they put extreme part. That's right. They put extreme part, but the KGB put side, which makes it confusing because there actually is a word for side. <laughs> all right like the the one that's the loin could be the thing that's actually you know central that's what i was trying right? to taking it if as you meaning. think about if you think about the loins right <laughs> like it's the central support <laughs> yeah. you know it's right there by the root chakra you know right right all right so with the middle bar in the midst of the boards going through from end to end. And overlay the boards. I, I just want to stop for a second. Okay. Like, as you're reading this, right? Now, when I'm translating, I'm not really reading, right? Mm -hmm. But as you're reading this, I'm like, how did they ever imagine it to be that rectangular shape that they, you know, originally proposed? Because none of this makes sense if you're just making a rectangle. The interacting boards, the, you know, that support from weight being brought down, a mm -hmm. uh, beam going through the middle. I, I mean, it's just, uh, it makes no sense when you look at like the, what they did is like, they put a little tent hut inside of a tent wall. So <laughs> it's very weird. It's very weird. Yeah. Alrighty. And overlay the boards with gold. And make their rings of gold as holders for the bars and overlay the bars with gold. Why do you need gold on tent poles? <laughs> oh my gosh, man. Now think about the, the model of that dome structure, mm -hmm. right? Overlaid with gold. Mm -hmm. It's like an antenna. In this, it's causing this. It's like an antenna. Mm, it, I mean, if you it's think beautiful. about it. It really is. Yeah. It's beautiful. I mean, it's like you get the the electricity, if you want to call it electricity, mm -hmm. going around the outside of the, quote, dome structure. And it then it gets focused into the central antenna that connects to the Ark of the Covenant, the Ark of the Contract, huh. which is the meeting place of the creator. It, it's just, oh, my gosh. How could you not think of it like this? <laughs> like The gold on everything shows you the the conductivity. Of the whole thing. Yeah. So. And you shall raise up the dwelling place according to its pattern, which you were shown on the mountain. And you shall. Because he gets, he gets an actual picture, right? Okay. Here he's telling Moshe to draw down the description because when Moshe goes down the mountain, he could paint the picture in his head, but mm -hmm. how would he describe it to the people? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So he's <clears throat> like, you're going to write down all of these specifics. So even though this is how I show you, this is how it looks like at the finished product. These are the ingredients. This is how you assemble it. You know, it's very precise. And yeah, it's it's nothing like anything else in the ancient world as far as the description of the structures go. Like the pyramid, right? It's a mm -hmm. very precise um, building, but it's not it's not built this way. Right? right. And if somebody was to say, well, Moshe was a smart dude as far as, um, architecture goes because he grew up in Egypt or whatever, they don't have things in Egypt, this shape, these dimensions, this type of, of style of building, you know, and it's very specific. All right. And you shall make a veil of blue and purple and scarlet material and fine woven linen, the work of a skilled workman made with Keruvim. Right. So they're, they're actually um, making imagery on these carpets or, you know, 
what do they call them? Curtains mm-hmm. of caravine. Which again, that would be something that Moshe would have to describe over them, describe to them what they look like. And you shall put it on the four columns of acacia wood overlaid with gold, their hooks of gold upon four sockets of silver. (laughs) So specific. (laughs) And you shall hang the veil from the hooks and shall bring the ark of the witness there behind the veil. And the veil shall make a separation for you between the set apart and the most set apart place. Okay, so let me break this down really quick here. So the... The Ark of the Witness, I'm glad it doesn't say the Ark of the Covenant, right? Mm -hmm. But the Ark of the Witness behind the veil. So this is that curtain that I was talking about in 1 Kings where it pokes the curtain out, right? So Mm -hmm. this veil um, separates the set-apart place from the set-apart set-apart place. So when it says the the most set-apart place, it's like, here's the set-apart place, quote-unquote holy place. And then here's the set apart, set apart place. Like this is the most set apart place, right? Mm -hmm. So if you think about like the quote unquote Holy Spirit, that's the most set apart spirit. That's the, that's the, um, moving unseen existence. That's the most set apart from anything else. The creator spirit, you know? So of course this place has to be set apart upon set apart in the three dimensional world, not to be tainted by the exterior world, you know, protected by gold and carpets and (laughs) colors of frequency and, you Mm -hmm. know, lots of stuff. (laughs) Yeah. And you shall put the lid of atonement upon the ark of the witness in the most set apart place. Yeah. The lid of atonement doesn't necessarily have to be atonement. It could just be the covering, the lid of the covering. Atonement is a covering, um, uh, offering, right? Like if you're, if you want to pay something back, that's an atoning. That's what atoning is. Mm-hmm. So you, you give something to cover what's required. Mm-hmm. So it could just be the lid of the covering and it would still be the same words. All right. And you shall set the table outside the veil and the lampstand opposite the table on the side of the dwelling place toward the south and put the table on the north side. <laughs> and, you shall, and you shall make, <laughs> I know, it's crazy. And you shall make a covering for the door of the tent of blue and purple and scarlet material and fine woven linen made by a weaver. Okay, so a weaver can also be an embroiderer. So like it's like a specific, you know, pattern that he wants on there. Mm-hmm. And you shall make for the covering five columns of acacia wood and overlay them with gold, their hooks of gold, and you shall cast five sockets of bronze for them. So the exterior is sockets of silver, interior sockets of bronze. Very specific. And the the thing is, is like, why would let okay, so this is this is a tabernacle. It's a tent, right? It's a dwelling place, but it's a tent. So whenever the column of fire or the column of of cloud goes through the desert, they have to pack up camp and move to the next location, right? Mm -hmm. Now, when they put this building, when they set this tent back up, why does it matter which way is north, which way is south? (laughs) You know, there's, there's specifics. And, of course, if anybody knows anything about, you know, magnetism and you know the way the compasses work and the Mm -hmm. uh, magnetic declinations and stuff like this like there is specifics about a frequency generation based on the angle of which way you're facing when you set these things up there's it why is this so specific so specific it's it's obviously a a technological phenomenon you know whatever it is that they're producing here so Maybe not obvious, just maybe it's just me, but other people, other people see it too, as they read it. It's like, right. wow, I never knew that there, this is this specific and why is it so specific? There must be something very important and, you know, it, it, whatever it did must have been amazing, you know, to have the creator come to that focal point. <clears throat> 
Yeah. All right. So I'm jumping in chat now. Um, All right. Just looking around. All righty. See, there's a few people at Rockfin, but no questions. If you guys have any questions, now's the time. All right. So, yeah, I, I see a lot of chat in there. Um, thanks for that chat, Robbie. Yep, I understand. Like, we've been deceived with all sorts of signs and symbols and, yeah, twisting of words, definitions, you know, titles like God being the prosperity deity of Babylon and, <laughs> and such. It's, yeah, it's a mess. It's a mess. Have you heard All of right. Dome build theory. The specifications could also build a dome tent. Yeah, that's what we've been discussing. Yeah, that. Yeah, that's exactly what we're talking about. Um, check out Project Three One Four, right? Because it's Pi. Project Three One Four dot org, um, and he has a lot of resources there, including like he he has technically made all the different pieces uh, in a scaled model. And of course he didn't make it out of pure gold and silver and all this other stuff, but I would love, you know, there's something in the works that he's talking about that I can't get into too much detail, but let's just say the location of the original tabernacle, uh, is most likely discovered and, you know, it would be cool to make a model in that location. Let's put it that way. But I think if you use some conductive material, I mean, who knows? Who knows what it would do? I'm really curious. Um, but yeah, I've been talking to him and I'm offering my, my CAD help uh, to him. And once he gives me you know, he talked to me about giving me the old plans that he has. And once he does, I might do a 3D model of it that you can actually interact with. Like you can say, okay, this is what it looks like from the courtyard. This is what it looks like from the holy place. This is what it looks like from the holy of holies. You know, it that would be, be really awesome. cool. Yeah. Kind of like a walkthrough 3D model of it. I mean, the with the way things are, you could probably make an Oculus program and actually... You know, I mean, even now they have it to where you can uh, put a cardboard box around your phone and make your phone 3D. So, like, when you look around, you, it'll be like you're actually inside the thing. Oh, that would yeah. be cool. Yeah, that would be really cool. So, that is definitely, like, multiple years project, though. <laughs> uh, I wonder if the hanging golden figs mimic the stars. Yeah, who knows, man. Um yeah, when like you're you're triggering me by saying stuff like that because, <laughs> uh, man, what a thought! Like the design of the gold specks in the dome matching the constellations and stuff. Man, that could be, wow, that could be interesting too. There's a lot to think about. I mean, the thing is, is like, you know, now that we have the the understanding that we are not an infinite speck of dust flying through an infinite vacuum of nothingness. And then you see that the, the model of the tabernacle is that of the heavenly throne room, the floor being Sapphire floor. Um, it just, yeah, it, it stirs the imagination up. It's like they've, they've dumbed us down so much in religion, education, government, all this stuff where the wonder of the creation and the creator is like, it blows your mind, man. But like, you know, when you look at these like, um, geometric patterns and like the golden ratio and, you know, all of creation has these things in it. And when you think about like the interior of the dome structure and the poles going, interacting with one another, that create, that could possibly create like a, you know, because of the dome shape and the antenna in the middle, that could cause like a serious like um, uh, 
a vortex electrical signal, you know, it's crazy stuff. It's very cool stuff. So keep your minds open. Um, you know, and don't, don't, uh, take my word for anything. I, I do a lot of speculation, but even when you read through it, like the distinction of all these different ingredients and specifics and measurements and angles and like direction, directional angles, like mm -hmm. why does this have to be facing North and this has to be facing East? You know, it's like, yeah, very interesting stuff. So I can't wait to like work with, uh, what's his name? Hoy. Andrew, Andrew Hoy. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, I can't wait to work with Andrew Hoy and uh, and put this together. I think it's going to give me a much, much better understanding of what I'm looking at, you know, when I read this. And, uh, you know, like the potential of it. Yeah. Because you can make a smaller version of it overlaid with gold. Are you frozen? Oh, reconnecting. Old and you Jack. Really? Because I didn't lose you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Now it, uh -oh. it beeped on me for a second. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. I opened the website. I don't know why I'm losing internet speed all of a sudden, but I opened Project Three One Four dot org and it. Yeah, it disconnected me. I'll I'll leave all the internets closed, but um, I can't wait. I, I'm really excited. Like, you know, CAD is my thing. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's going to be fun for me. Awesome. I'm looking forward to see what y'all do. Totally. All right. And, you know, I, I encourage everybody go to the website, order his, uh, you know, his, uh, what do you call it? Going through the slides. What's that called? PowerPoint. Yep. <laughs> order his PowerPoint where he goes through all the distinctions and, you know, and tell him Jack sent you, you know, I don't get any money or anything. I just want him to know that I'm supporting him and, and shouting him out, you know, yep. let him know that, you know, I'm, I'm sending people to him because I really think his work is phenomenal. I wish I had thought of it because <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it takes a mechanical mind to look at this kind of stuff, you mm -hmm. know. Alrighty. Awesome. All right, everybody. Thank you for joining me and just Jack. Once again, for our anti-religious scripture study. And the earth is still flat. Always. And um, we hope you have a wonderful, restful day. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.